Welcome to the experience of the EK Nucleo CR360 Lux DRGB. Without a doubt, the most premium feeling unboxing experience of an AIO that I have ever got to do. Everything in this goddamn box feels premium. Even the goddamn mounting material got its separate thing going. And we got a printed out slideshow. You are welcome. And don't forget to choose a side in the battle. This is the EK Nuclear CR360 Lux DRGB. And ignoring the fact that they showed everybody how to do a first impression, it is still EK. And EK water blocks is generally known for high end water cooling parts. Thus, the expectations for this thing to perform like a monster are really high. But let's start at the beginning. The CR360 Lux series exists in multiple sizes and color versions, but for today we will solely focus on the black 360mm model. Inside the most gorgeous box ever you will find the radiator, three EK FPT 120mm fans, a PVM extension cable and the thickest manual I have ever seen included with the NAIO. In fact, it is of everything I have ever covered, this is the most thorough manual. Then we also got the accessories box containing all of the installation hardware necessary for all the nowadays relevant sockets, including a tube of additional thermal paste, which you don't really need for the first time because the water block already has some paste pre-applied to it, I just needed to remove it for the benchmarks. To get the cooler going on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the thumb screws. Then we need to take the water block and install the AMD mounting bracket from the bottom up using the M3 screws. Over on Intel, take the provided backplate and position it behind the motherboard, screw it down using the thumb screws on the other side and install the Intel mounting bracket onto your water block. And from there, on both platforms, remove the cold plate protection, slap the cooler on top of your chip and screw it down using the springs and the thumb nuts. Overall, I gotta say, this is by far the best mounting system of an AIO I have seen so far. Not necessarily because the hardware itself is like out of this world, it's it's not like they did a much superior job to everybody else. Let's say for example Be Quiet, it's not mechanically better than Be Quiet, but they thought about it everything. To tighten these thumb screws, you got an extra tool in the box. The mounting thumb nubs are the same for AMD and Intel, and in the manual they explained everything, and I mean everything. Most of the time you can be lucky if you get a one-liner, and if you struggle to get a screw in because it's stupidly designed, like we already had, they won't give a damn and you're on your own. But here people have been thinking about every possible scenario, including warnings for things that could go wrong at this point. So kudos, EK. This is well made. But let's talk about the fans. For the CR360, we got three of EK's FPT fans. These are up to 2300 RPM quick fans, pushing up to 72 CFM at up to 2.7 mm of H2O. So these are, number wise, some good fans. And although it might look like it, these holes around the fan are not going all the way through. It's just designed and they are closed up somewhere in the center in order to make sure that no air is spilling back and will be kinda lost. And of course we got rubber around the corners. In the center we got seven heavily bent wings designed with an enormous central hub section which also contains all of the LEDs and make them shine. But the coolest part for me is what EK called only link, on, on link, only link, on, on link. Link? Why, why did I write on Lil Link? On Lil Link? I hope it's on Lil Link. In my words, mini PCIe. To power the fans, we got a miniature 8 pin seemingly PCIe connector which daisy chains from one fan to another. Of course, we can adapt all of this back to regular 4 pin PVM and 3 pin ARGB once we are done, but goddamn, I love this connector. 3 pin ARGB is the spawn of the devil when it comes to how tight these things are holding together, and PVM is okay, but it's ki it kind of requires you to very often pull on the wire instead of the connector itself because it is just too goddamn small. But this is sturdy AF, easy to grab, easy to install, easy to remove, easy to install back again. And when you ask me, as far as fans are concerned, this should become the standard for a combined ARGB and power or speed connector. This is flat out superior, more beautiful, 
and the way to go. But let's get to the radiator. The radiator in use is a regular 27 millimeter thick model and we counted 20 FPI, so relatively dense. Going around, we got some brushed matte aluminum covers featuring a silver border. But the unusual part is at the side where the tubes are. There we got a quite big chunk that hides the part where the tubes enter the red. Now, this is definitely not something performance enhancing in any way, it's just design, but it, it does look kind of nice. It aligns with the fans, creating that straight line design, which does look kind of cool. I give them that, but it's not necessarily enhancing in any way. The only upside I could possibly think of is this prevents you from pulling the tube so hard that you potentially damage them on the radiator end. But to be honest, I have never heard anybody anywhere facing that issue anytime. So potential benefit, but find me the person who who got to use it. Anyway, going out from there, we got 400 millimeters of very high quality feeling braided tubes, which are adjustable at the water block using very stiff and nice looking fittings. And because it's EK, now comes another important part. Inside this quite big chunk of cooling power, we got a 55.6 by 55.6 copper base with a PVM controlled 3100 RPM pump sitting on top. And of course, RGB. The top of the block got some arc reactor style air RGB going, including a little EK logo. And in case you need to switch it around, you can always remove the top cap and just turn it. I'm just glad that EK thought to make the top logo push pin instead of wired. Another moment of somebody thought about stuff before pushing it onto the market. But I believe this was now really enough about the AIO and its little quirks and benefits. Let's now focus on the important part, performance, cause it is EK and EK does water cooling parts. So so this is kind of home base for them. We benchmarked the cooler on our standardized benchmark machine featuring a 3900K with three different presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. At 120 watts, which would be like the gaming-like scenario, we saw that the Nuclear 360 managed to keep the CPU at 26 degrees C above M at 26. That's the new top result that we have seen, outperforming absolutely everything we have benchmarked so far. Congrats! But that's not even like the impressive part, because after max speed, we then slowly lower the fan speed, just the fan speed, while keeping the pump running at 100%, and we note down the noise and temperature, which gives us a noise to performance ratio across the whole spectrum. As expected, the Nucleus did some shenanigans, as this is a giant cooler, and 120 watts is really not something that can, it doesn't really change anything. But this thing and its noise to performance ratio outperformed everything we had on the table so far. Even the much thicker Lee and Lee Galahad to Trinity performance did not stand a chance from start to finish, the Nucleus flat out won. And to give you more insight on how much, the Nucleus reached noise floor around here, which is about 29 point something degrees above ambient. There are 360 millimeter AOs that didn't reach that temperature, no matter how quickly the fans were spinning. It's not like the fans are brute forcing the way through the benchmark. That's a really good thing. Then we pushed the load up to 250 watts, and here the nucleus cooled down the system to 50, or the, the chip, to 51.9 degrees C above ambient. Again, a quite big step in front of the Lee and Lee Galahad to Trinity performance, and in front of everything else we have seen. For the corresponding noise to performance graph, it, it kind of looks even better now. Again, from start to finish, the Nucleus dominated the whole spectrum, beating everything else we got. But this time, the gap between it and the others got slightly bigger, especially at around 40% of its fan speed. To make it clear, if we run the fans at 40% on the Nucleus, we got about 57 degrees C above ambient on the chip. And at that point, we can't hear it anymore. And the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2, on the other hand, cannot reach 57 degrees C above ambient, no matter what we do with the fans. So the water block, the pump, the whole combo, everything is just, it's a symbiosis. Pushing the heat up even more to 320 watts allowed the nucleus to cool down the chip to 71.2 degrees C above ambient. Now with a slightly smaller gap than to the Trinity performance, but still at the top of the benchmark chart. And the corresponding noise to performance graph looks just as devastating. This is the best ratio we have had so far across the whole spectrum. And thus, this 
is the best AIO I have seen so far and I mean from every standpoint. Quality, the best I have felt. Installation, maybe not like the best mechanically, that, that's really hard to measure, but definitely the best when it comes to explanations and understanding the process and, and making sure that you know what you're doing. EK basically created a benchmark for how to guide users through this process. Performance, the best I have seen until today and noise to performance also the best I have seen until today. And not even on a, on a specific load. It's if you are gaming, best. If you are working in, let's say, Premiere, best. If you are running Cinebench as your preferred pawn, best. I am shocked. EK made everything else look and feel like a second-class product. I expected it to be like, good and deliver good performance, of course, considering, you know, what they do for a living, but I didn't expect them to be that good. And price-wise, it's actually not even a deal-breaker. I can get one of these here right now for 177 euros on their shop, which, considering what a Li and Li Gala had or Silent Loop 360 will cost you, isn't that bad. Especially not for the performance. Sure, it's not affordable, but this is a best in class product and considering that there are alternatives that will break the 200 euros mark or even higher and are not better it's kind of all right for me so do i recommend it yes this is as far as my benchmarks are concerned and everything i've seen about it the best in class aio i have seen until now so yes i do recommend it no matter what you're trying to cool down with it this thing will perform like a beast that was a wild ride but okay for today this is going to be it for ek and their nuclear cr360 the Lux the RGB. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell yourself an RG Poop emote, it's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a little trophy for the nucleus, because it deserves one. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at Alltech on the Aza Cube 360. Also an interesting AIO, but not by far on this performance level. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.